So it's Danny Flexen here for Seconds Out. Delighted to be joined by KD of 258 Management. We're here at a press conference for Fabio Wardley, Fraser Clark, British heavyweight title fight. And I believe you've got some news, perhaps, about the undercard? Yeah, um, as you know, we've got quite a few fighters at Sky at the moment and Boxer and um, got some interesting news pending. Looking to put Vidal on this card. Um, they were meant to announce it earlier, but yeah, that's the plan to get him on. There might be a few more surprises with our stable on the card, but yeah, we're just here to support. Now, you know Fraser Clark himself very well, of course, as well. What do you make of this fight? Do you think there was a lot of talk up there at the press conference about whether it was too soon for him? Indeed, he'll set a record if he's to win the fight. Is it too soon? And if not, why not? Um, is it too soon? Do you know what? I, I think with everything Fraser's done as an amateur and I was in the gym with him at GB, seeing how he's come along, see how hungry he is for these type of fights. So no, I don't believe it's too soon. I think we've got to factor in age with people, the mileage they put on their bodies as amateurs as well. So I think when you look at it, it tallies up pretty correct. And you mentioned Vidal, of course, hopefully on the undercard. What's the, the plan for him in 2024? What are you looking to see him progress? We know he's English champion, of course. Um, I guess when you look at it, it's the natural progression. <laughs> it's the... <laughs> I'm, not allowed, I'm not allowed to talk about Fraser anymore, but, um, but I've known him for fucking years and, and, and don't forget the business. Did we not have exactly that conversation? <laughs> we just had that conversation. Listen, forget the business. This is my this, brother. This guy, yeah. This, is my brother. this guy and all the 258 guys are my brothers and they're all businessmen and they know the situation. Whether, whether we're together or not, we're together because, listen, they looked after me and they always have. And I'll do the same for them. I run them up. You, I run them up for everyone. Come on. All right. There you go. Ringing endorsement from the main man there. Uh, but you're just telling me what the plan is to progress Vidal in 2024. Um, do you know what? With Vidal, it's a progression thing. He's currently the English champion. He's got his eyes set on the next belt in progression, which would be the British. Um, we're just trying to figure out what's going on with that and what can happen in between. We're not going to sit around and just wait. For the opportunity to arise so our main objective is to keep Vidal busy and keep progressing him so the next natural progression will be towards the British title Isaac's currently holding it so that seems like the re more realistic option I know Boxer and Hennessy um, have a great relationship so if we can get that done we're looking at that route but it's the title I, I don't like to put names on things so I don't know who will be holding the title you never know if Isaac moves on to fights for the EBU. The belt might be vacant. It, we could look at Chef Clark versus Vidal, but Vidal's looking at the British title. So whichever way we can get it, we're looking to get it. Now, all due respect to Isaac, as you said, he is now mandatory for the EBU, held by Sislak, which would be a very tough fight, to be honest. Um, I'm not right, ruling Isaac out, but it's a very hard fight evil for both men. If he does vacate, what a mouth-watering prospect, Chev Clark and Vidal Riley. Is that the sort of fight you'd take at this stage of Vidal's career if the British title wasn't on the line? Yeah, of course. I think um, when we sit down as a team, management, training team, um, promoter and all sorts, Vidal stressed to us that, look, he just wants to keep progressing. So we're not focused too much on the names, but we know who's in the division, who's around where he's at in his career. and. Look, he's willing to take them all on. I've, I've worked with a lot of fighters over the years and he's one of those fighters that doesn't really focus on who it is. It's just saying, let's roll. Is it, is it part of my plan? Is it in the progression? Let's go. Now, the most celebrated man at 258, of course, apart from yourself, yeah. <laughs> is Anthony Joshua. He's got a big fight coming up March the 8th out in Riyadh against Francis Ngannou. You're the guy that kind of manages the camp and the whole process. What changes, if any, do you need to make for him going up against someone whose background is in MMA rather than traditional boxing? Um, once again, like I said, I, although I manage the training camp, I let the training team do what they need to do. So Ben Davison and Wiley and all the guys down there, they're doing their due diligence and they're preparing very well. We've got a range of different sparring partners in. We're not just looking at the rounds he did with Fury. It's a really detailed investigation into Francis. And I think come fight night, you'll see how well he's prepared for it. Now, you mentioned Ben Davison there. You've obviously been a constant in the AJ team throughout a number of different trainers over the years. What's it been like adapting to that for you and for the other members of the team when new people come in? Um, do you know what? I, I believe everyone we've worked with is very professional, so it's not hard to adapt in a professional environment. Everyone plays their position, knows what their role is, and leaves people to do what they need to do. Um, the relationship between Ben and AJ seems to be 
fantastic in my opinion. It's pretty smooth. You would have thought they'd known each other for years. So I've got no complaints on how it's going down there and I, I like what I see. And you talked about the in-depth investigation on Francis and Garnu there. Ben Davidson and his team are obviously known for how thorough their preparation is, particularly in terms of videotape of old fights and so on. How impressed were you by that? Look, if you got... <laughs> they're like the FBI. I'll, I'll just put it like that. They, they see things that I don't and a lot of people don't and their, their attention to detail is very good. So we saw, we saw glimpses of what they could bring to the table in, in Anthony's last fight. So I think we just got to be excited to see what else they can, can bring. We're on a journey with them right now. One last AJ question. As I said, you've been there from the very start. What are the main differences that you perceive in AJ now to AJ back then? Um, in all fairness, I'm going to be so biased with my answer and just say that he's been so consistent throughout his whole career. He's never been out of the gym. He's never cut corners in training. And I think he stays being the professional he's always been. So, um, what about personality-wise, mindset? I think there's an evolution as a fighter that you I've seen with him. Um, he's very, very focused. He's always been a student of the sport. Outside of the training sessions, it's still watching boxing. There's no movies in camp. It's not really one of those type of environments. So I just feel like he's consistently been on his journey and it's been so dedicated, so much sacrifice in to just being the best boxer he can be. So I've got nothing that I can really say. It might be a biased answer, but that's how I feel on it. Now, before I ask you about the whole Tyson Fury situation we all saw over the last week, when Turkey Al Al Sheikh is at a press conference and he says, if Usyk pulls out of this May the 18th date, I'll, get, uh, I'll try and get Fury to fight Joshua. Is that something where he speaks to you guys first and says, look, I'm going to say this on TV, you know, or, or is it, did it take you by surprise? Uh, we'd, we've had a lot of conversations. Uh, him and his team are very transparent about their plans and their intentions. And sometimes when you hear things, you think, is that even possible? But yeah. I think we've seen with what they're doing over there that a lot of things they say are pretty possible. So there's no surprises, but there's always a little bit of a surprise to it. <laughs> And I think anything is possible with what they're doing in the sport right now. It only gives you just over two months between Nganu and a potential Fury fight. It's not an ideal amount of time, especially coming off what could be a hard fight. How would you feel about that if you were kind of pressed into service and said, right, we've got 10 weeks, let's go? Um, it's one of those conversations which, as management, you run by the fighter and the training team and you see where things are at. But we all know AJ's always let's roll when it comes to opponents and dates um, if it works it works and I, I don't see any problem with it if the opportunity arises and it's not exactly like it's unfamiliar territory we've been in camps preparing for Tyson previously we've had two camps preparing for um, Usyk so either way it, I, I can't see any issues going into that fight. How did you feel when you first heard the news about the cut and the fight being postponed, given your role in AJ's camp? Did you have some sympathy for Tyson and, and for Usyk as well, of course? Uh, nah, no, no, no sympathy, if, if I'm honest with you. Um, it's not really my concern, I think. As long as our date and our opponent is still intact, I couldn't care less about the other guys. We're not going to sit around and just wait for them and see what happens with them. I, I want to get Joshua as active as possible as he wants to, so they're part of the plan, but they're not the plan, so it's not really our, our focus. And just tell us, just before we let you go, I'm sure other people want to speak to you, what is your role, how would you describe it, at 258, so on a day-to-day -day basis? I don't like putting titles or nothing. I'm not a fighter, so um, on a day-to-day -day basis, I, I just keep it running keep it going so I'm the man that's about it. So you coordinate everything is that fair to say? Yeah I, I've, I've never really liked titles so I just do what I can and make things happen. Well we appreciate you making this happen and uh, yeah very best luck with the rest of the camp. Take care. Cheers mate. Thank you.